open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. Hey, and welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting from your pie perimeter on a very special episode. I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. And like Aaron said, we are at your pie perimeter today. We are here for our 100th episode. We have our good friends from Creature Comforts here with us. They were on show number one, Aaron, way back in the day. Way back in the day. As they say. And uh, here again for number 100, we thought it was appropriate. They've got some cool things going on. And we have uh, Jonathan Chinoth. Chinoth. Jonathan Chinneth with us. He's the quality sales specialist. And we have Matt Stevens. Matt is the director of community and culture for Creature Conference. He handles their Get Comfortable campaign, some other programs. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit. Definitely, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're also, again, going to talk a little bit uh, here with Your Pie Perimeter. They've got a lot of things going on. They were one of our main sponsors from, uh, from the beginning, and so we appreciate them. And, uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite a ride and, uh, you know, quite a week, actually. It's the holidays. You know, it's Thanksgiving it week. I hope you enjoy some turkey and our Black Friday and Black Fridaying and all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, you know what? You were really looking. For, you had a great, by the way, week. Just even I did. Even the I week. try and always do it 100, Aaron. Oh, even, you do. Hashtag. Even when it's not the 100th show, I try to do it like that. So That's I went right. to El Roswell last week, which is a, an event that Hamp Covington from Missouri uh, hosts uh, every month. And uh, my first time going, he brought out a bunch of his beers, Mazert beers, oh my. which are fantastic for those that know of Mazert. And uh, we got to try a few years of their barley wine. And I think 2016 was my favorite. Uh, okay. 23, 2013, 2016, and 2017. But 2016 was right on it. They had their Machupa Coffee Stout, okay. which is what they made for Hunapu's Day this year. Yep. And a pecan pie beer. So some really good nice. stuff there. And tons of other great beers. But for me... The Mazurts were really the highlight of the share. Oh, of course. I think that uh, anytime you get a Mazurt uh, uh, vertical of different years, I think you're doing a pretty good job. So I wasn't nearly as cool as you are, Tim, which usually happens. This is true, Aaron. This <laughs> Definitely. is true. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, I was able to get some other things. Uh, of course, uh, Brian, our, our field operative, just came back from Arizona, so he had some tasty beers that uh, he brought back, and I was able to try some out. Uh, Critical Band IPA from uh, Modern Times out of San, San Diego. Uh, the Borderlands Noche Dolce, which was a very sweet milk stout, which was enjoyable but a little bit too overpowering for me. So I actually put a shot of coffee in there, and it worked well. It was, so it was good. And uh, a Tombstone uh, Double Dry Hopped IPA, which I thought was phenomenal. And um, also, I was able to check out Terrapin's So Fresh and So Green Green IPA for this year with Citra. So I usually like, I look forward to that one every single year. So I just know you it's like kind of those, the end of the those year. fresh, heavy hops, right? That's how I roll, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and check out uh, this week's Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. So, Tim, what have we got on tap today? We've got some good stuff. As we mentioned earlier, Aaron, we started off with Creature Comfort's Orange Crush IPA. It's a collaboration with Creature Comfort's and Your Pie Perimeter that they did. We'll talk about that beer a little bit more in depth yep. here. Uh, also, I'm sipping a table beer, which I love a good drinking beer. Yeah, absolutely. Table beer is fantastic. We're uh, we're snacking on some of Your Pie's cheese sticks with lots of garlic now, and it, it goes really well. And Jonathan brought us a treat. We it's opened good. up a can of Tropicalissima. That is actually uh, just released yesterday at the brewery uh, on Friday. And uh, it is a commemorative batch because they just brewed their 500th batch of Tropicalia. That's amazing. 500 batches already. I mean, that's a lot of work for you guys. So, uh, you know. No, not way, necessarily you, John, hey, Jonathan, but uh, to celebrate absolutely, exactly. Absolutely. All those guys working trop all the way. That's so. right. Uh, all those guys working those triple shifts and everything at the brewery, making absolutely. sure you get we get dropped to the masses. So, uh, so that's awesome. Looking forward to drinking some of those great beers. But for now, we have got field hopper to Brian Hewitt in the house. He's going to go ahead and give us the headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. So, Brian, what's in the headlines this week? So, I have some really good stuff. I got some great stuff. Um, it's, it's well established that I'm a fan of mead. Yes, you and are. And it turns out that there's some new mead coming to Georgia. Okay. Superstition Meadery is coming to Georgia. That's amazing. That's some, some really good stuff right there. You know, and that's pretty cool timing because we just talked to those guys 
for a, a, an upcoming Drink This Beer podcast. That's right. Uh, we talked to their head meadery and yeah. meter, meterist, meadery. Mead, mead magician, I think is what they called him. It's uh, Carlos Bassetti, I think was how you say his name. But, yeah, so uh, it might also be bad timing, though, because the Barry White uh, meads j- just got released right before uh, this was announced. So we might miss out on it, it this year. But Modern Hops is teasing the idea of the possibility of a Barry White day in Atlanta in 2018. Now, that would be pretty awesome. And, of course, Modern Hops is the distributor who will be bringing superstition yes, yes. To, uh, to, 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 to Atlanta and that metro area. So, very awesome. I'm really excited about that. Cool. I am as well. I really am looking forward to that. So, we've got some interesting legislative news. The, uh, the Department of uh, Revenue for Georgia is held a hearing on online alcohol sales uh, on the 17th. So what's going to happen here is they're considering the possibility of op- off-premise retailers conducting online sales of beer and wine for curbside pickup. Consumers would still have to register with the stores before making the online purchases, and retailers would have to track sales and verify ages. Mm-hmm. So no prepaid sales. Uh, payment is only upon pickup, and there has to be age verification at that point in time. I don't know how that went, but and they're considering not it. For you're not going to be able to mail order. When they say no. online ordering, I think yeah. everybody thinks, "Oh, you know, I can order beer. This is you can order from a store and then go pick it up there, and that's it, right?" Yeah, that that's exactly it. You can't pay in advance. You have to pay when you pick it up, and they're not mailing it. So yes, I got excited when I saw online alcohol sales, and then I saw curbside pickup. I'm like, where, where, you know? Baby steps, though. It's okay. So, we'll yes. It. At least they're thinking about it, so that's a good thing. In, in other interesting news, uh, the Brewers Association came out with a survey that indicates that brewery tap rooms are actually category growth centers. So what that means is direct-to-consumer sales are not cutting into traditional on-premise sales like bars and, and okay. restaurants. Right. Brewery tap rooms are actually helping to grow the entire beer category. So 64% of the 1,500 consumer uh, respondents that they talked to said that a brewery visit was either a different type of occasion than visiting a bar or it was in addition to what they would have done at a bar. So they wouldn't have gone to a bar instead of the brewery. They're completely different things. So that's that's pretty cool. Basically, breweries and their tap rooms are fulfilling a different need than bars are. They're very similar, but they are different. And that was something that was a big to-do when we went to pass the laws here was brewers talking about, uh, you know, distributors and retailers didn't want to be hurt by brewers. And I think what this survey is saying is basically what most of the craft beer side said is it's complementary to it, and it, it facilitates growth, right? Yes, it is It is growing the entire market. So by having the tap room open, it's actually improving the sales of bars that sell those beers. So it's not hurting anybody, and that's what they found. So my favorite kind of drama, I think we all know, is yeast drama. Oh, don't we yeast all? Yeast drama? Yeah, yes, I can't yeast, handle that. yeast drama. That is my favorite kind of drama. Left Hand is suing White Labs for, quote, contaminated yeast. They are claiming that uh, yeast that they got from White Labs resulted in a $2 million recall of their milk stout nitro and a couple of their IPAs. So basically what was happening is the beer would be packaged and there was a secondary fermentation, which overpressurized and in some cases broke the bottles and produced off flavors like clove and things like that, apparently. Um, So they halted production for two weeks in September and October to completely disassemble everything, uh, like their, their valves, their pipes, everything, to try to clear everything up. And there was a downturn in their sales as a result of this, so they really got nailed. And as a result, of course, they are seeking actual, compensatory, punitive, and I quote treble damages, and I don't know what treble is. I assume it's a treble. Op- treble yes. damage. That is sounds that like, serious. Is that like base damage? I don't know if that's. I think it's. I think it's an octave higher than punitive damages. Oh, okay. Is what yeah, I'm I guessing. Make sure. okay. I think that's it. So there's no comment at this point that I could find from White Labs. Okay. Yeah. So very dramatic. Much yeast. I mean, that's a pretty serious claim, you know, to say that your yeast is. Is coming in bad, so. Yes. Anyway, I'll be following that for sure. Well, no, definitely. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take a quick break. We'll be back very soon with Creature Comforts.
Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery, but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowa watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Saren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, yeah. Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. Coming up a little bit later on, we're going to be, uh, well, having a giveaway to give away and uh, just a little bit of uh, some other cool stuff. But we're celebrating our 100th show here at Your Pie Perimeter live on this holiday weekend. Or at least as live as we can be, Tim, right? We're live on Facebook right now, well, so that true. counts, I guess, right? I guess so, that counts. That's key. That's and key. you know what? If you don't have any, we're usually on Thursdays. We're yes. taping a little early this week, but... If you're just hanging out on a Thursday evening around 6 p.m., you should come hang out with our live video feed. Yeah, on we do Facebook. a pretty fun job, actually, if I do say so it's myself. Fun. We it's crack open some You beers. can ask the brewers questions, yeah. uh, chat with other viewers. It's a good time. And usually the secret is is that um, most of the interesting conversations are taking place between the segments, too. It is. Some of the well, crazies. not most of the intercom. Well, no, no, the, no, the, no, the no. show's still good, no, Aaron. Show's Don't good. be so... so, so. That's right, but we have good. some good that's conversations right. in between as well. No, that's so, true. That's true. But right now, we're going to have a good conversation with Creature Comfort. So, Jonathan, Matt, thanks again for joining us, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome time. And we are here not only to celebrate our 100th show, uh, but one of the big things we're here for is the Orange Crush IPA release. And this is a beer that you guys brewed with your pie or vice versa somewhere there. So... Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this beer? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Tim. A little bit of insight about Your Pie is uh, part of our Get Comfortable charity program that we did each year. They've been great for-profit partners for us uh, to help out with homelessness, poverty awareness in athens Clark County, as well as Metro Atlanta. So we made it fun by allowing them to have a little friendly competition and the number one store to bring in the most revenue uh, contribution dollars for the charity program gets to come be a brewer for the day at the brewery. Very and cool. uh, the whole idea behind this was kind of a, a cream soda IPA, if you will. So we wanted to make sure we had the right amount of hops. We had Pacifica, a little bit of Citra, some Mandarina Bavaria. Uh, came out to this beautiful, you know, 5.5% lactose and uh, orange distillate IPA. And that's what we're enjoying today. So Very yeah, good and stuff. And the cool thing about that is that you can only get it here at Your Pie Perimeter. Is that correct? Or at Your Pie as well? That's, that's it was Your Pie Perimeter, yeah. And all the, all the locations between Athens and Metro Atlanta were involved awesome. in it throughout the year. Yep. So cool. But so, this beer, this beer is only at the Perimeter location. This is only at Perimeter. Because they were the winners. They beat out all those other Your Pies, they, so they get they the beer, beat right? They all out, yeah, so okay. they got to have fun with us at the brewery. And uh, this is an official release before we actually release it at the brewery itself. Very cool. Excellent. Well, guys, thanks again. Show 100. You were on our first show. 
back here for number 100, so approximately two years that uh, since you were first on the show. And I know a ton has changed for us in that time, and uh, I think a little bit has changed for you guys as well, right? So. Just a little bit. I uh, First of all, new uh, new folks, Matt and I here uh, yep. talking to you. I believe it was just Adam, David, the original crew, uh, was, Chris yeah. probably here. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, glad to represent again. Congratulations and happy Thanksgiving Thank you. as well. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we've got quite a bit of changes going on. The new facility is uh, well underway. We're hoping to wrap that up by early next year. So we're only a few months away right now. Brand new 40,000 square foot facility, uh, bringing in a great new brewing system, Steinecker from Germany. A uh, little bit of a production increase. So. A little bit. So, so you won't be having people ask where's Tropicalia all the time then, if that's the case. Hopefully not anymore. Well, hopefully not anymore. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hopefully right. they're always asking for well, it. That's right. Sure. Always right. looking right. for that's it. Right. So. Just, just more, more love to go around, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. And, Jonathan, you mentioned you're about a few months out because I know kind of fall of 2017 was Target. But one of my favorite games is because I keep the breweries and planning list on the website right. is to look at the initial Target opening date for every brewery. If anyone ever hits their their initial target date, we're going to throw them a party because they'll be the first ones to have done it. <laughs> I've done it, yeah. So, I think yeah. you should. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should. There's always surprises, but, you know, with us enjoying, uh, you know, trying to keep the uh, the honor around Athens, uh, we want to continue everything in our backyard. And, uh, as always, we like to look into historic sites to possibly – you know, uh, reclaim and uh, build on. So we picked uh, Southern Mills location, which is about a mile and a half away from the current facility. And we had a lot of work to do on it. But uh, if you follow us on social media, you'll see how the growth has occurred over, uh, well, since March is when we right. broke ground. Mm-hmm. And it's been less than a year, and, and we're staying on target so far. So. so, yeah, I think it's almost fair to say that uh, Tropicalia probably put you guys on the map. It was the IPA that really a lot of folks uh, kind of saw creature comforts in the very beginning as and started to really kind of ramp that up. But since then, I mean, you've been getting a lot of buzz in the craft beer community. You've had a lot of uh, rare releases, of course, uh, See the Stars. Uh, you've had so many other ones on your Sour and Barrel Age program, a gajillion and a half collaborations. So right. um, it almost seems like uh, you guys are trying to carry the flag for the quote-unquote beer nerd community here in the state of Georgia. Is that something you guys really really try to do and uh, try to kind of up the, up the game, I guess, a little bit? When you really get down to the, the main brewers, the folks that are creating the recipes, you have, even though there's you know three, four, five guys, you, you see quite a bit of diversity in terms of the way that they are creative. So whether it's a light lager, whether it's a, you know, a double IPA or, or a fruited stout or whatever, a mixed fermentation, our, our hope is that we, we find ways for people to enjoy the craft beer um, community and just everything that comes with that. It's such a creative field. And so, um, I mean, when you talk to Blake, when you talk to Adam, when, I mean, when you really get into the, the, the details about what are y'all really passionate about in terms of beer, you'll hear different answers every day, and they're trying to find outlets for them to express that. So, yeah, I think there's definitely stuff for the beer geeks, and there's definitely stuff for people who are just trying to explore the world of craft as well, which it's nice to be able to kind of... So does having that, that reputation put pressure on the next releases is it is that is that ever a thought you know that man you know so much hype around this or that we got to make sure to keep keep knocking it out of the park there i i think it depends on how you look at it i mean uh we do a lot of traditional styles as well i mean bebo pilsner has been doing very well for us uh, as soon as we release cans on the metro atlanta market scene uh and that's only occurred in this past year alone uh, Reclaimed Rye is still draft only, but it always does well with the fall transitional season coming in right now. And uh, and then all of a sudden we'll release a black lager at the brewery out of nowhere. Yep. So I think it's uh, more or less just keeping people on their toes, and it, it doesn't always have to be hop forward and hop centric or, right. or super sour beers or anything like that. I, I think it's always about quality and balance, and no matter what we make, we're, we'll stand by that and uh, you know allow people to come in and, and really kind of take the experience in their own direction. So. The, yeah. the tri- so, trivia of the day, by the way, my very first Creature Comfort Spear was out of your pie, and it was reclaimed for us. So there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. That, that will be asked on the, on the quiz later. That could be, so, exactly. So keep <laughs> an eye on that. That's Absolutely. Good. So, guys, you know, two years, and we're going to do a lot of kind of flashing back here in this show, but uh, in the last two years, we've seen just massive changes in Georgia, you know, not just for, for the breweries or for us, but, I mean, we've had big, big law changes. You know, Georgia and Alabama have seen – some major change to their laws. 
uh, the growth rate of new breweries opening up has Absolutely. just been uh, tremendous. And, you know, September of this year, for the first time, you got the right to sell beer at your brewery, last state in the nation to do it. So how has that gone for you since September, and how has that kind of changed the way you approach things? I think it's gone tremendously well. Um, I think we all knew that it was going to do well for us. Uh, we've been talking about you guys have been doing a great job just with Georgia Beer across the board, talking about the beer laws and how we need to focus on change occurring. And uh, like we mentioned earlier um, from the analysis coming out, uh, we know that we're not taking away from our retail partners around us. Uh, we definitely did not want to undercut in any way, shape, or form. So that's something we all worked on as the guild together. And since day one, uh, September 1st, we... We've had nothing but an increase in volume. We've had out-the-door can sales go up. And uh, and just overall awareness. I think it helps for tourism in general, for the Georgia beer community. And uh, I believe we've been extremely pleased with yes. what we've seen. And one of the things you've really done well is uh, doing limited edition can releases um, at the brewery itself. So you have an incentive for all of us folks to make the six-hour drive to Athens. It's not that far. I want to talk about that. We're about to have to take a break. You're right. We'll talk about but that I've a little got bit some later. More, but, I, I got mean, some more got questions, questions on that part. So. Oh, definitely, definitely. But, uh, but no, I mean, one of the things that you have, to, have been known for is a lot of those limited edition can releases. The Tropical Lisma, for example, the Run Absolutely. the Jewels collaboration. We'll talk to, we'll talk about that a little bit in uh, the next segment, too. So, uh, so it'll be fun. But uh, in the meantime, we're going ahead and take a quick break. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website, and you can catch us on the socials as well. Coming back, we'll talk more with Creature Comforts at our 100th episode, broadcasting kind of live at your pie perimeter. Stay tuned. Darren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pie or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys time for the hot list the beer guys have the scoop on what's going on next week brought to you by crl contracting we build breweries crlcontracting.com that's hot and lots of awesome stuff coming up in atlanta this week of course if you've got some energy after thanksgiving and uh, black friday events uh, tomorrow sunday we have mustangs and beer meet up at dry county brewing up in kennesaw on Wednesday, there is uh, the Decatur Farm to School Dine Out, and that's uh, at my parents' basement. They're participating in that. There is a cookie and beer pairing at Hop City West Side, and of course, it is trivia night right here at your pie perimeter and also up in Woodstock at Reformation Brewery. On Thursday is the monthly Brewers Lecture Series at Hop City West Side, and this month's special guest is Spike Bukowski of Athens Terrapin Brewery. On Friday, we're rolling into December. So all month long, the whole month of December, get a dollar off of every full pour beer at Ironmonger Brewing for ugly Christmas sweater. December, wear an ugly Christmas sweater, get a discount on your beer. Everybody wins. So we also have the Sea Otter Stout release at Red Brick, and uh, that is their collaboration with the Georgia Aquarium. We have Meet the Brew at Brick Store Pub with Allagash's Rob Tob. That's a big event, y'all. He doesn't do a ton of his stuff. Very special to have him come in here, so if you can make it out, that's one to check out. And next Saturday is the Wrecking Bar Strong Beer Fest. One not to miss. All kinds of big beers barrel-aged IPAs and stouts and all kinds of stuff. So check that out. And for a full list of all events happening, check out BeerGuysRadio.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Come join us at BeerGuysRadio.com. We are taping our 100th episode with the guys from Creature Comforts. We've been talking beer. We've been drinking beer. We've been reminiscing. 
Absolutely. Aaron. We've been doing some reminiscing. When we took the break, we were talking about beer releases, and I have a request. I, I, this is what I wanted to, to ask because you guys release, you guys do a ton of beers. And I know you started your innovation project that I think it puts out a new beer every day. Is that correct? That's what that, it feels like. I think right? we shoot for uh, 130 barrel batch a month about okay. right now. Okay, so. all right. So, but you always seem to do them uh, on like a Tuesday or midweek type of release. Usually a Tuesday or can, Thursday can release. Can you stop doing that? Yeah, exactly. I guess is what I want to <laughs> For the working it's man. hard for us Atlanta guys to get over to Athens. So if you just move all of those to Saturday, I'd greatly appreciate that. So I'll uh, – Duly noted. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we know a guy. Or even know, but is there? Yeah. Is that intentional? Are uh, you know? I know you guys uh, like to take care of local, and that is uh, to release them at that I, time. I think we, you know, we always know that the weekend warriors are going to come in from Atlanta, and uh, we definitely want to take care of them as much as we can. But uh, it just happens to work out on either a Tuesday or Thursday most times. Uh, this week it happens to be Friday, Friday uh, right. for the holiday. But uh, I don't know how much intention goes around it. That's, or a, that's a wonderful question. Yeah. Okay. I got it down in my notes. I think they do it just to hurt me. It's personally yes. directed at me, I believe. <laughs> so. You just have to have like, a friend who goes sure. to like, UGA or something so you can I just do. pick you up. Yes, uh, some, I need to, to work exactly. it out. So, But it, but anyhow, always enjoy those when we can get over. You know, took a trip recently over when you did the Stay Gold release. We went to the release party here in Atlanta. Then over there for some cans and uh, check out Academia, new brew pub you have over there. So that was a, a yeah. good time. You've got Southern, so. you've got Terrapin. I mean, Athens has really become a nice hot spot for craft beer. Of course, Five Points Bottle Shop, one of the better bottle shops in the, it's a, in the it's state. It's a cool as well. little beer town there. It yeah. Is, yeah, it's so. a great beer town, great food scene. Uh, of course, the music has always been strong. So uh, you know, as much as we can tie back into the community, that's that's the full intention. So. Yeah, definitely. Now, Jonathan, I want to go back to the, the Stay Gold release okay. because you know I'm a huge hip hop fan. If you could see me, you could understand why. You know, I'm just really big That's into those kids. That's the first thing I thought when I met you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that would be the big thing. But, no, I, I'm interested. Like, how did this Run the Jewels collaboration come about? Uh, do you guys know or just I, all of a sudden I have like, might just call you up and say, hey, I want to make a beer or how that work? That would be amazing. No, yeah. I only have a loose legend. You, you were around since the beginning of that, Jonathan. How about you take that one? Yeah, that's true. I, I know uh, and that's that's obviously going to be more of an Adam and David question, but I know that uh, they did do something with Burial just before us, and so they, they've already been kind of on the beer scene there, tying it in with Interboro out of New York and LP being from New York, obviously Killer Mike from Atlanta. A lot of people were asking, well, you know, where are we going to do that first here? And, and uh, you know, now that we did it with such a successful release and it was such a great night, I know we all had a great time. Uh, just being able to tie it back into the Atlanta community um, is something that was a little bit different. But also, um, I, I really think that that was an important niche because, obviously, we want to get back to Atlanta as much as we possibly can. And to have it tie in that way was really special. We're going to jump topics here, Eric. Okay. We're going we to switch that. it up. So we are here, as we mentioned a couple times, for the Get Comfortable collaboration beer release and matt we want to talk to you some about the get comfortable campaign we want to let people know what it's about how to support it and all that so um i'll let you kind of take it from from there but you joined the team recently to head up programs such as this correct that is correct yes so my my interesting little bit of trivia with creature comforts is that right when we opened the tasting room back in 2014 I was on that taproom staff, and I was there for about 14 months, just honestly for the love of craft beer. It was I had a full-time job at the university doing some nonprofit partnership-type work, um, but just love craft beer. There was this new brewery opening downtown, and I uh, had a chance to just pour some beer there for a bit. So this is a bit of a homecoming, taking this position about 10 weeks or so ago um, as the new director of community and culture. Um, one of the things that I love that our CEO, Chris, has said, and, and during the hiring process, one of the big emphasis of his was we cared about our community even before we had started brewing beer. And we knew that as this business hopefully was going to take off and hopefully grow, and thankfully it has, we wanted to keep this community value on pace with what we were trying to do in the beer community. Um, so with the Get Comfortable program, which started really that first fall, very, very modestly, but... Um, but, you know, Chris and the whole team was just basically saying, we want to do something, let's just see what we can do. And they created this great brand, and they raised some money and gave it away. And just every year since, and they've just tweaked and expanded. And Get Comfortable is really the first community-oriented project that I'm looking to expand. Um, so I'll pause there, because there's a lot that's going to go into expansion, sure. but I want to... Well, okay. no, it's interesting. One of the things that we learned, because we talked a little bit about the Get Comfortable campaign uh, over the year, 
um, that you think of Athens, Clark County, and you think of, of course, University of Georgia, big college town. Absolutely. But outside of that, in Clark County itself, it's a very rural area uh, with a lot of poverty, and you, and, you, and you wouldn't think that, you know, if it's an average person. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's one of the things when you work in that space in Athens, one of the first things you hear is that the, the poverty cycle is generational and cyclical, but it's also a bit invisible because, mm -hmm. and this is a neutral concept, people can come to town for the great beer and the great dining and football. Those are wonderful reasons to come to town, but unless you are kind of really traveling throughout the county, you often are not encountering um, the other side of that equation. Yeah. So, Yeah, and, so, and such a huge college town, of course, you get a lot of kids that are staying there for four, five, six years. Absolutely. But they're not getting out of that uh, that downtown area. Really. That is absolutely correct. So, like, every year, uh, athens Clark County is kind of hovering that top five most impoverished counties uh, in the nation, our side. And yeah, I promise there. you, if you've never been to Athens, for the, you know, if you go for the first time, you would say, really? Um, but it's there. It's mm -hmm. invisible. Yeah, I, was about to say, I, I was, think we're at about a 30 36 percent poverty rate absolutely see that's i was surprised the first time i heard that because anytime i go to athens i'm going to popular populated and popular spots absolutely and you know i'm never going out from that i'm over there to go to creature comforts academia the bottle shop grab a bite to eat and then i'm back to atlanta so right. that's what i see there you know? and that so is and that is a super normal experience and there's nothing wrong with that once again but um so, yeah, so when you talk about how do you add value to your community as a, as a local business, that's where Get Comfortable came from is mm -hmm. how do we not only do something ourselves but hopefully unify the business community and just, you know, so you don't have to hire a person and create a brand and create a whole strategy. You can just say to, you know, your fellow business owners, we've already built a structure. If you want to participate, we're hoping to make that pretty easy. And your pie is just a fantastic example of what it looks like just to join hands and raise more money and give it all away so that was something you started the first year you know you, you had the campaign there i know it's grown over the years to where you do partnerships you you actively call on businesses to come in and say look you know we kind of challenge you to you know join us in supporting this community exactly. your pie stepped up another athens-based business that has Absolutely. grown tremendously expanded a lot so um with this last year's campaign uh how did that go and what's planned for next year I would love you to talk about last year since I wasn't there yeah, at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, like you said, it, it started uh, relatively small with a handful of employees the first year. I think we raised about $3,500. Um, the second year, we made it up to about $65,000. And uh, this past year, we raised over $120,000. And, you know, we went up to five nonprofits that we work with uh, in and around Athens and also Metro Atlanta because Action Ministries fills in for the Metro Atlanta piece off of Ponce there. Um, and really the idea was uh, teaming up with, with you know, five months running, uh, one nonprofit per month for each five months. Uh, we always have Get Comfortable Wednesdays at the brewery, so 100% of the proceeds always went in. It's also a good way to feature those nonprofits as they went uh, from month to month. And then being able to kind of expand on our for-profit partners as well. So that's something that we decided to bring into the metro Atlanta area a little bit more. Uh, I believe we're going to do that again this year. And um, and we really want this to be an evolving situation now where we don't really have to have necessarily a time limit on it. Uh, I believe that's something, a new concept that we're going to bring in and, and just keep it a, an evolving cycle. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Matt, if people want to take a look at the Get Comfortable program, what it does and how to get involved, where the, should they go to do that? Yes. So we're really launching the whole thing in uh, early January, January 10th. It's going to be kind of that first Community Wednesday when everyone's back in town, basically. But um, earlier than that, we're going to be launching GetCurious.com, and that's going to be where lives all of our community programming. Um, so it's not live yet. We're building the site as we speak. But by the time we launch this thing on January 10th, you can go to GetCurious.com and find all the partners, all the ways to get involved, and uh, what that really looks like, nuts and bolts. Absolutely awesome. Thanks for the great info, the great program. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back right after this. If you're looking for some more craft beer talk, head on over to Drink This Beer. It's our podcast that talks to brewers from around the country and around the world. This week, we're talking to Unknown Brewing's Brad Shell. I would never work for me. I'm hardcore about the beer and nothing slides. I mean, nothing. I mean, if it's 
to create a, a culture in the back of, of professionals uh, when we're on the clock and this this life of you know party hard off the clock. But on the clock, everyone there is willing to make beer. Everybody wants to make beer. If you work for me, here's what's going to happen. You're going to start as a noob. You're going to spend five, six months sweeping trash, taking out trash. If you get really good at that, and I mean really good at that, I'll let you shuffle cans on my can line. If you get really, really good at that, I'll let you scrub old yeast and hops out of a tank. And the best you'll ever be is like you're going up and down the brew house all day, turning valves and carrying bags of grain. So that's as good as it gets in the, in the brew world. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you want to do? And the people go, yes, those are the guys for me. That's Drink This Beer. It's a podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. He hates these cans! Stay away from the cans! Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. We are here at your pie perimeter celebrating our 100th episode. It's craziness. It's good stuff. We're having a good time. And Jonathan Chinneth, uh, quality sales specialist, is with us. We're wrapping up. That's a very long title, Jonathan. That's a long way. title. And so. especially, you know, we USS. Always- now, Jonathan, we just want to talk to you about uh, the beers that you uh, recently released. Yes, Black uh, this are uh, releasing this weekend, uh, Black Friday releases. So, uh, Golden Door, Dayspring, Booger Hill. Yes, sir. So, three of those. Also, your Subtle Alchemy series released at the brewery on for Black on-site Friday consumption. Yes, with on for on-site consumption only, right? Exactly. So, yes. it's a, I, I'm familiar with a couple of those new special releases uh, because they're kind of returning from the series, but right. Golden Door is new, correct? Golden Door is new. So, um, again, uh, Farmhouse Saison, uh, aged on French oak. So, that is a, uh, a new addition to the series. Uh, and then, like you said, the two returners, uh, Booger Hill, uh, which we have had in the bottles for quite a long time now, uh, did a degorging process uh, to get rid of some of that sediment and uh, be able to give people like a nice, clean, fresh beer to guard with a locally sourced honey from Booger Hill. Now, and then, disgorging yes. is totally unusual in beer, right? This unusual in beer, very usual in champagne. Wine, yes, champagne in yes, that. absolutely. So, so, so for those of us who are untrained, what exactly yeah. is that? Yeah. So think of it with dry ice, turning the bottle upside down, uh, allowing sediment to stick to the cork, and then being able to remove any of the, um, you know, part of the selling process with wood and you know it's the honey self, that's it's a, it, gunk and absolutely junk and yeah it, it's, it's a good way to make sure that you get to enjoy every drop so excellent that's very good to know so i like the idea of bottle service so you're gonna have like a rope off, roped off vip section and you're like, you know you have to have the crystal in the club oh, yeah. that's what i'm looking for with the bottle well, service. the beautiful thing about athens is uh everybody's vip so uh <laughs> yes with subtle alchemy series uh one through three or 001 through 003 however you look at the however it's written on the website but yeah, so uh, Blake Tires, who is head of our barrel age program, he's been able to work on this uh, mixed barrel, mixed fermentation going on for quite some time now, uh, starting with 001, which is a saison, uh, mixed fermentation, and then getting into more of the fruit blends um, and alter- alternating barrels from French oak to American oak as we progress. So. so what made you guys decide to do on-site consumption only? Well, I believe with this barrel series being extremely limited um, compared to some of the other ones, as well as, you know, with this one in particular, we want to give the customer the full experience and also the full explanation of what they're getting. So we want to make sure that they're getting the quality beer, like with all the discussion that goes on with, with beers and the blending process, we want to make sure that they're having that true Creature Comforts experience when they come to the brewery. So, 
What if I just want one to go home and shoot through a beer funnel? <laughs> that, can I bring my own funnel to the brewery? Well, you're a wild man, Sam. Go you might for not it. want to do it that way, but uh, I'll tell you what, we will hang out with you quite a long okay. time, and we'll be able to get into a full discussion on it. But uh, but the to-go beers will be Booger Hill, Day Spring, and uh, Golden Door, which is the new release. So. Very, very cool. cool, very cool. Awesome. Jonathan Chinna, again, thanks so much uh, for joining us on this 100th episode. You're welcome. Uh, Thank if you. folks want to catch up on Creature Comforts, where should they go? I would say you cannot go wrong with our Creature Comforts website, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We do a great job keeping up with social media. And we also want to give a special shout-out, by the way, too. We, we want to give uh, some shout-outs to some of the people kind of behind the scenes at Creature Comforts. Emily Sabula has worked with us over the years. She keeps us informed. She's awesome. In the loop. Awesome. Emily, thank you so much for your support. Definitely. Over our last 100 episodes. Thank you, Emily. So You're always great. It. Yes. Awesome. Jonathan, cheers. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, right. guys. Now you, now you have to step aside for the, uh, for the main person <laughs> in the, here room, in the show. Make so room. That's right. That's right. Lisa McClellan. That's right. From uh, Your Pie Perimeter. Uh, and also Morgan McClellan, also from Your Pie Perimeter. So they're coming on right now, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll kind of vamp a little bit here while Morgan is busy going back. He's he's a busy man. He's pouring taps. He's, he's getting pizza ready. That's good stuff. He is. He is. He's very busy. That's very good. I, I like to hear that. It's better than <laughs> just hanging around doing nothing, right? Uh, Definitely. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh there he, he is. Had get, he had to get a beer. Oh, well, that's for very those important. That watching. Ex- exactly. Exactly. So, so guys, uh, you know, of course, Morgan and Lisa with Your Pie Perimeter, you guys have been one of our biggest sponsors over the years, and we really want to thank you for this. Uh, well, you're you. one of the reasons why we have 100 shows in the in the can. So, so again, thank, thank you. you for all that you've done. We've been done. super excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? I'm super excited to be a part of that Creature Comforts Club. You won the. You won the. Uh, uh, the the chance to go have a make a beer with creature comforts that's pretty sweet. We did, we did. So your pie, um, we're we're based out of Athens as a company, and so their people talk to our people, and all the your pies during the last get comfortable campaign um, competed against one another to see who could sell the most creature comfort beer with an awesome charitable purpose of donating a dollar for every Creature Comfort beer we sold to their Get Comfortable campaign, which is um, to end homelessness and poverty in Athens, Georgia. And so I think we, we were able to raise $1,300, and then we were able to find a matching partner for that, so nice. we got it up to uh, 26 2700 bucks. Very yes. cool. That's awesome. And so not only were we able to give back to the community but and serve amazing beer because their beer is wonderful, but we won the grand prize of getting to brew a collaboration beer with them, which is the beer that everyone is enjoying tonight. Hey, are you enjoying this beer, or did you sample it? I sampled it. Okay. Unfortunately, All I've right. been pregnant through the entire process. So yeah, the York- Not unfortunately. <laughs> Not on, unfortunately. No, exactly. The York Pie family growing in so many ways, yes, right? Yes, so, definitely. Now, you have the location here at uh, Perimeter, mm-hmm. and your pie in general is growing a lot. In a short amount of time, they've expanded quite a oh, bit. Yeah. But but you personally are in the process of opening your second franchise, correct? In uh the Grant Park area of Atlanta. Yes, so we're super excited to be opening up our second store in Grant Park. It's actually where we live, so we're local um, owner-operators down there. So excited to be coming in the neighborhood. Fingers crossed we're going to be open on December 8th. We're still getting through our health inspection right now, which gotcha. has all of, all sorts of surprises involved. But I really love the look of it. We, we've changed things up a little bit style-wise. I think the neighborhood's really going to think it pops. But same amazing pizza and plan to have a stellar craft beer selection in addition to some really fun seasonal cocktails. Nice. Okay. Now you have a, there's a few things kind of down in the Grant Park area now. You've got to even Tide Brewing's down mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it uh, my my friend's growler shop? Yes. Oh, they're That's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just kind of filling in some blanks over there, right? Absolutely. Farm Burgers are going to be open up right next to us as well. So it's going to be a really fun corner right at Hill and Memorial. And so, you know, our we mentioned our grand opening is slated for December 8th right now, but that's not set in stone. So definitely follow us on Facebook at Your Pie Grant Park and on Instagram at Your Pie GP for all the latest updates there. It might yeah. be set in sandstone, you know. It's kind it's, of It's firm. kind of you can drift a little bit. <laughs> yeah. you know, we can kind of go back and forth. Wipe you know, it out, rewrite it, right. it yeah. whatever you got to do It's written in there, pencil. So. That's right. We just, well, we just talked about the, uh, the, the Creature Conference folks about their new facility opening, too. It's yeah. always just, you know, Big you mark surprises. a date and then you just kind of keep expanding on that date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of we had such a wonderful time with them. They were so hospitable. Took yes. us to breakfast, took us to dinner. We took them to lunch, and we just laughed the whole time. And I, I got to hang out in the walk-in cooler, and that was maybe the nicest part because it's hot in that brewery, and that's just that's, that's like late summer too. Yeah, that's I've done that a few times. Get into breweries and uh, end up in the cooler, and just just don't want to leave. There was yeah. I was at a brewery one time, and a few of kind of the 
you know, the, the regular crew that knew the brewers quite well ended up in the cooler. And pretty soon it's just like everybody's just sitting in the cooler right. and having a beer. Yeah. So it's like, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. So now with this being Thanksgiving week, did your pie, did you do a turkey and dressing pizza? Here, we so. did not. We um, offer a sliced turkey as a topping on our pizza okay. year right. round. There so that's a really go. fun seasonal knot if you're in the mood for more turkey. But um, we've got the butternut squash right now, which would be fantastic with some turkey. I tried See. it with chicken. There you go. Yeah. So that okay. pizza features roasted butternut squash and pepperdu peppers. So got a little bit of a zing from those. Really delicious and perfect for fall. And with bacon, of course, because... With bacon. Well, yeah, yeah bacon, bacon always makes turkey. everything Bacon makes so. everything better. Good stuff, absolutely. <laughs> well, cool. Morgan and Lisa, again, from Your Pie Parameter, thanks so much for hosting us. And thanks, again, Thanks so much Thank for being you. a great partner for us uh, over the over the months, over the episodes that we've had. Yes. So, cheers, and, of course, you know, we'll have pleasure. to keep, keep up to uh, see what's happening with you guys in, in, in the future, and I'll cheers your, your water glass. Cheers. There. Cheers. cheers. Happy Congrats, 100, y'all. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, now it's time for a giveaway to give away. So, Tim, what are we giving away? Uh, who are we giving give, away to? We're, you know what? What we're giving away is a very cool swag pack. That's true. So we've given away a few of them uh, tonight at Your Pie, mm-hmm. part of our celebration. We're going we're gonna to cut a cake here very soon, Aaron, All right. for 100th episode. But our winner for our subscriber swag pack this week is Terika Strozier. So, Terika, thank you so much for subscribing to This Week in Georgia Beer. And, Aaron, if others want to join the fun and be entered to win, how would they do that? That's yeah, easy. Just head to BeerGuysRadio.com. Sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer. Tim does an awesome job giving you the scoop on what is going on across the state. Uh, it's all the happenings, and you'll be entered to win our weekly swag pack. So, uh, about to wrap it up for this 100th episode. But first, I just want to let, uh, you know, on a Tim, and I know we all agree with this, thank you so much for listening to us, supporting us Absolutely. For the, over the episodes. It's been fantastic. I mean, it's 100 episodes, man. 100 episodes. Crazy. That's Aaron, thank you for uh, for the idea to start okay, Beer Guys we'll Radio for almost two years ago for uh, all we've done over the last couple years and building things up. It's been quite a ride, Tim. Absolutely. Again, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll have a, uh, we'll have a great one. Have a great rest of your Thanksgiving weekend, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers.